Hello, good morning or good afternoon or whenever you are watching this with your second graders. It's Mrs. Duran again with your second ELA lesson for the third week of distance learning. And remember we're talking about space and I told you last time we were going to talk about space travel and this time we were going to talk about what astronauts do in space. So I'm really looking forward to sharing this lesson with you. Before we get into that though, I wanna talk about the vowel teams AU and AW. The vowel teams say the AW sound in the middle of a word or a syllable. The AU comes in the beginning or middle of a word or a syllable, and the AW comes at the end of a word or a syllable. Remember, a syllable is a piece of a word. So like the word seesaw, we would go seesaw, and there you go, the AW is at the end of the word seesaw. So let's work on some sentences here so that we can practice this awe sound. I like to draw pictures. Right here we have the word draw, which makes the awe sound, and it has the A-W because you can see it's at the end of the word or syllable. Let's tap out the word draw. Dr -aw. Draw. There is a lot of laundry. The word laundry has the A-U, vowel team, and right here it's gonna come in the middle of the word. And as you can see, it's in the middle of the first syllable. Let's tap, let's not tap out laundry, let's tap out the syllables in laundry. Laundry. I drink my soda from a straw. Straw has the A-W, vowel team, it makes the aw sound at the end of the word. We can tap out that one. Straw, aw, straw. The pasta has a lot of sauce. The word sauce has the au vowel team to make the aw sound, and it comes at the beginning of the word or in the middle of the word. Let's tap out the word sauce. S aw, s. All right, so I have some other words on this page that we can practice this aw sound with. Remember I said the AU aw comes at the beginning or the middle of a word or a syllable, like the word auto. Let's tap out auto. A-t-o, auto. Haw, a-o, haw. Vault, the a o t vault. And there's that word sauce again, sauce, s-a-s, and laundry, o-a-n-d-r-e, laundry. Here we have the a-w-a, and these are all going to come at the end of the word or the syllable, like the word paw, a, and draw, dr a, and straw, str a. Thaw, th, ah, and seesaw. Seesaw has two syllables. So as you can see, it came at the end of the syllable, the last syllable. Let's tap out seesaw. Or we're going to clap out seesaw. Seesaw. Good job. Let's move on. So we have some new high frequency words this week. And we're going to practice them just like we did last time. I'm gonna write the word on a flash card. I will hold it up and say it, and then you guys can repeat it on your end. And remember, you can do this, make these at home with your parents. Just come back to the YouTube video, look up the high frequency words, and you can make them. Or you can find them on the work that I posted on Class Dojo, or Google Classroom, not Class Dojo. So the first one is the word music. Music. The next one is the word old. Old. The next one is the word sentence. Sentence. And remember with high frequency words, these are words that we can't sound out. So we really need to practice learning them. The next one is the word thought. 
thought. Then we have the word while. While. Night. Night. And then we have the word picture. The next one is the word spell. Spell. Then we have the word together. Together. And our last one for this video is the word world. World. So you can make these flashcards at home. And like I showed you last week, you can actually make two sets and you can play a memory game and match the flashcards to the other words or match the flashcards to each other. And so now you should have a pretty thick pack of different flashcards you can work with, which will help you learn these high frequency words a little better. So like I said, this week we are talking about astronauts exploring space. So last time we talked about space travel. This time we're going to talk about astronauts. The book I'm going to read today is called Astronauts Exploring Space and it's by Colleen Sexton. We will learn how astronauts prepare for life in space, complete their missions, and survive in the atmosphere above. Because as we know, the atmosphere above Earth is not the same as it is on Earth. They don't have as much gravity, there's not fresh air to breathe. Space is not usually set up to for people to inhabit. So this is how astronauts do their job and still deal with all of the challenges that come with traveling to space. So the first thing I want you to think about is what do you think this story is going to be about? Well, I see up here it says astronauts exploring space. And then down here it says we will learn how astronauts prepare for life in space. So I think it's going to tell us a little bit more about how astronauts live in space and work in space. And what do you think we will learn about astronauts? Well, it says right here, they're, we're going to learn how they complete their missions and survive in the atmosphere above. So I think that, that, that that's what we're going to learn. How are they doing their work in space? All right, so we have some vocabulary words that I wanna talk about before we get started. We have the word space shuttle. And as we learned last time from our space travel book, the shuttle is a part of the rocket. It's the orbiter. It's the part that gets launched into space and then they orbit the planets on the shuttle. Then we have the word commander. A commander is somebody who is in charge during a space mission. He is the boss. The engineers. Engineers are people who create things to travel to space, like the space shuttle was created by uh, engineers. Um, the tools that the astronauts use, they were created by engineers. A mission specialist, that is somebody who is a specialist in whatever the mission they're doing in space is. And they're the ones who are doing a lot of the work in space, a lot of the science. A payload specialist, he's another astronaut that help, does work in space. A flight suit, that's what they wear, that's their uniform. A parachute, we get seen parachutes before. They're what help us float safely to the earth if you have to jump out of a plane or aircraft. Gravity, that's what holds us down on our planet. Then we have space station. We talked about the space station a little last time. People actually live there and work there. A satellite, again, we talked about satellites. They're responsible for a lot of things. Um, the most common satellites in the US are responsible for putting our TV and radio on. And a spacewalk is how the people move to the outside of a space shuttle to work on something. That's the spacewalk. So let's go ahead and open up the story. And like I said, it's called Astronauts Exploring Space. 
And this is a chapter book, just like the one we read last time. And we're going to learn what are astronauts, astronaut training, so that's probably how they get ready to go to space, living in space, missions, and then of course they always have a glossary that tells us more about our vocabulary words. And there's a learn more section in this book. So let's read. Astronauts are people who fly space shuttles or work in space. The word astronaut means star sailor. People who become astronauts work in many different jobs. Some are in the military and some are scientists, engineers, doctors, or teachers. There are different kinds of astronauts. Some astronauts are pilots. They fly the space shuttle. Pilots can also be commanders. A commander is in charge of a space shuttle and makes sure everyone aboard is very safe. Some astronauts are mission specialists. They make sure the space shuttle systems are working correctly. Payload specialists are also members of the space shuttle crew. They are not trained as astronauts. Their job is to work on experiments. Astronauts train at the Johnson Center in Texas. They take science classes and study how space shuttles work. They often practice using tools and machines. Sometimes they train underwater to feel like they are in space. Astronauts learn how to survive a crash landing on Earth. They practice using parachutes and swimming in flight suits. Astronauts train for about three years. Then they are ready to blast off into space. There is little gravity in space. Astronauts are weightless. They float from place to place inside the shuttle. Astronauts strap themselves onto special beds or into sleeping bags to sleep. Astronauts must be careful when they eat. Their food could float away. Astronauts have a mission every time they travel to space. They sometimes bring supplies to a space station where other astronauts uses the robot arm Astronauts may bring a satellite into in the space shuttle. The pilot uses a robot arm to put the satellite into orbit. Mission specialists might make a spacewalk to fix the parts of a space station. They wear special suits. The astronauts are ready to go home. The pilot fires the engines and steers the space shuttle back to Earth. The astronauts shut down the space shuttle controls. They are ready to leave the space shuttle. Mission completed. And like I said, we have the glossary here. It tells us some of those vocabulary words that we already talked about. And let's go back and look at some discussion questions. What are some of the different jobs astronauts, what are some of the jo different jobs astronauts work? Well, we, they said that they could be an engineer, a teacher, a scientist, and they do different things in space, like we have the commander and the pilot, we have our payload specialist, he's our scientist, we have our mission specialists. How do astronauts train to go to space? Well, they train for three years in Texas, and sometimes they train underwater, and they learn how to swim in flight suits and they parachute out of airplanes so that they can get ready in case they need to learn how to do something in space. How long do astronauts need to train before getting ready to blast off into space? Well, like I said, they train for three years. So they need to train for those whole three years before they can go to space. All right, so I have your writing assignments for this week. And remember, you just have to choose one. You're going to draw a picture of yourself as an astronaut and then write a few sentences. Why did you become an astronaut and what is your job? You can Google search some famous astronauts and write five facts about the astronaut you chose. Or you can write a story about living on a space station. What is life like on the space station? I put these on Google Classroom and with the three prompts so that you can choose one. I'm going to show you what I chose. Here's my sample. So I chose to write about an astronaut. And this astronaut, is her name is Sally Ride. And she was what inspired me to want to become an astronaut. I was about your age when I learned about Sally Ride. And that's why I wanted to become an astronaut 
I ended up being a teacher instead, and that's okay. Sometimes our dreams change. But this is Sally Ride. On June 18, 1983, Dr. Sally Ride made history as the first American woman in space. Sally Ride responded to a newspaper advertisement looking for astronauts. They don't do that anymore. Usually they pick astronauts from military. Sally Ride went into space again in 1984 on the 13th Space Shuttle Flight Mission. Sally Ride helped deploy satellites, run scientific experiments, and help NASA to continue to learn more about space and space flight. Sally Ride wrote a number of science books for children about space and space travel. So go ahead and Google search your own astronaut or use one of the other writing prompts that I gave you. Here's my sample. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learning more about space and space travel. And I will see you next time. Bye. Love you and miss you.